hey look at that it took like what six to seven months but we finally have the episode review for attack on titan season 2 the 33rd episode to be exact and shout out to the comment in the last video dj halls he said can we please talk about the opening where titan moses brings ginormous titan animals storming at the wall that shit made me die laughing it was hilarious you sir get the comment shout out of this video now let's begin Okay, so it's been a while guys, so please forgive me if I'm not able to review this thing as well because my gears aren't turning as well as they used to. So, from what we know, Eren has been taken away. Reiner and Bertolt have successfully captured him after that whole nightmare scene and they've gone off into the wilderness and all the scouts are severely injured. Mikasa is just passed out and... The information that Reiner and Bertolt were titans has finally been taken back to the scouts and the other, um, I don't know, soldiers or whatever. Then instantly, my favorite part of the episode by far is the flashback. The flashback of back to when Eren was a kid and he was fighting a bunch of bullies because Armin was bullied. And Armin is just so adorable that he is an, he's an easy target. And Mikasa hears this and just goes bolting. And when you think about it, Eren, is it his titan's ability that's making him so strong-headed? Or was he born that way? And that's why he got the ability. Because you have to think, the ability, if... If you die and it doesn't get passed on to you, it goes... Sorry, if somebody dies and they haven't been eaten, the ability just goes into a newborn, like... Oh, yeah, that's true, you guys. If you follow the anime, you don't know about this yet. Anyway, I'll keep quiet. But his ability... Do you think it influences his personality? Or his personality is a result of his ability? I, I don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. So, Eren is just getting his ass whooped by these bullies and a shopkeeper is calling... What's his name again? Hold on, one second. Let me go check. You guys won't believe this, but I actually had to go and type on Google name of Eren and Mikasa's soldier friend to get this person's name. That's how much I just completely forgot about it. But anyway, mistakes can be made and shall be forgiven. Hans is telling the shopkeeper that don't worry somebody with much better experience is gonna come and take care of it and Mikasa just comes flying in and kicks all their fucking asses it is beautiful but Eren is not backing down like no I gotta fight as well and that whole scene the shopkeeper was the best part he got some moves and yeah you can even see even in the flashback Eren like runs away or something and he leaves Armin and Mikasa behind Mikasa immediately wakes up and She's just devastated, like, why isn't anyone going after Eren? Like, she is just out of her senses, and she just immediately retracts into depression, same as Armin. They just, you can see how these people are so close to this one person, but he's always leaving them behind. I call it main character syndrome, MC syndrome. But when you see a trio of friends, everybody when it's three of them everybody should have a connection with everybody or there's that one person that connects the two but i don't even see a connection between mikasa and armin like that close friendship i don't know that's just me but in ed ed and eddie ed and double d can be f very close when ed is not around and eddie and ed get into all sorts of shenanigans when double d isn't around but ed and double d don't really mix well but I don't know, why, why am I bringing Eddie and Eddie into this? If you follow me on Twitter, you'd notice that I retweet a lot of um, an account that posts their screenshots. I just love that cartoon, but anyway, why are we talking about American cartoons during when we're reviewing anime? That is taboo, whatever. Mikasa, sorry, Hans comes over and just gives this empowerful as ass fucking speech for like three minutes and you can see he just lifted their hopes he talks about how he misses the good old days where he was nothing but a drunk soldier which is sad by the way when you miss the days when you were drunk and useless that's how fucked up their life has become assimilate that information for a moment and 
he tells them his point of view of the story how they're always together they're never apart these trio you guys were just you practically came out of the womb together and he also reminds them of how Aaron is just so tenacious how it even scares him and no matter what Aaron won't go down without a fight so they shouldn't be worried even if he's up against a, a far greater opponent he will not just stay down and we've seen that throughout the course of this anime season one and two Aaron does not give up his determination is borderline terrifying everybody says this even his trainer in season one when he was learning he, he talks about it he says it in a different way but he also talks about how it's scary when he sets his mind to something and he brings back errands and make us as confidence like that and they just start eating this chocolate no not chocolate bar this i guess protein bar that even he says tastes like dirt <laughs> and they made it look delicious i was like i would like to eat that now please and thank you um the reinforcements come in and they're ready to go out and retrieve Erin. and i remember soya 7 image that popular um youtube channel that reviews anime and such he when he reviewed this episode because i remember watching it he made a mistake where he referred to john as being part of the military police when he was actually part of the scouting regiment maybe it's because in season one john was talking about military police so much and then after the four years before he came back that information didn't refresh in his brain and we haven't seen John in this season much of him I think except for in flashback and in the last episode sorry in the last season he faked being Aaron so that might have played a factor in him staying like at the capital wall scene or whatever that one that's inside I don't know that's just me I just remembered that um what else okay they're loading the horses going down the wall getting ready to battle and hanji just freaking <laughs> terrifies someone's ass she terrifies her assistant's ass by just grabbing his leg which i found very effective at terrifying people try doing it in the dark anyway and she's pointing out a map at how far they can go the what she's learned from like titan shifting and how far maybe their abilities can go i don't know i don't remember the episode much guys and we see Aaron wake up basically armless and mm, reiner said it was an accident i think but it's also for the best since his arms are missing because either reiner did it on purpose or it was by accident but either way it was a win for them because well we'll talk about it in the next episode because i really wanted this to be five minutes long but yeah we do what we can but yeah that's the end of the episode we see yamir also without her arms and legs and the scouts well basically the soldiers or whatever the military just gunning it into the unknown trying to get Aaron back thank you all so much for clicking to watch i'm just gonna spam out these episode reviews because i just it's been a long time you guys i miss you and i miss reviewing things and yeah get ready to be spammed fucking hard by this channel anyway thanks all so much for clicking to watch please don't forget to read my books on whatpad support me on patreon and follow me on twitter and as always don't forget to like comment subscribe and stay forever awesome this is tvc signing out